to old timey assault weapons. <laughs> is that all we can find? Is old timey assault well, weapons? Well, we're going to bring would you do that for us? <laughs> no. Hey, hey, that's edible, right? No, no, no. Uh, yeah. I borrow the grade. Nice little uh, gray Ruger Fakero. A little bit older model. I mean, not what I consider insanely old, but a few extra sets of grips, holster. This particular gun came in used, so it's not really something you see every day. It's got a little bit of engraving on the cylinder, kind of a, a neat, you know, case-colored frame, which I'm assuming most of them are probably like that anyway, but nice gun. 45 Colt. I'm not crazy about how the, uh, the grips are, are fitted. I mean, like on a lot of these guns uh, from the factory, of course, they... They fit the metal to grip, you know, the fitment is done all at once before the gun is sent to be actually finished. So what they'll do is they'll put the grip panels on and they'll grind everything to blend it in. And that's how you get a just absolutely perfect fit on the grips. And uh, on that particular gun, any, you, you know a gun has replacement grips when you can run your finger along there and you feel the edges because a, a factory gun is just not gonna be like that. I'd be willing to bet that one of these sets of grips is the original set but I could be wrong. But that's just one thing you can tell when you're looking at used single actions or any revolver with replacement grips. I mean, right there is a, is a dead giveaway. See on the bottom, how there's that gap. That's not something you're gonna see on a factory gun. Usually everything's blended in, but um, and just something to consider. You know? And if it's not, it's gonna be a lot closer than that. Well, yeah, I mean, and that can be done a variety of ways. I mean, if, if the grips are larger than the metal work, which is, Pretty common. They usually make them a little oversized so they can be ground to fit. You can mark them and get them pretty close, but not as close as they're going to get from the factory the way they blend everything. But uh, that's a pretty neat gun. I, I haven't had a chance to take that particular one out and, and shoot it yet. But that's a used single action that we got in. Little Vaquero. <clears throat> and then you got the new model Vaqueros. Um, that's an older Vaquero. This is a newer one, and I actually like this gun because it's stainless, and it's got the uh, shorter barrel. This is a really slick little gun, and you see the stainless has got considerable amount weight to it compared to just a regular one. They do weigh a little more. Not a terrible amount more, but I guess the, the stainless is probably a little more dense, I suppose, a little heavier than you know the other metals they use. That's a solid gun there. You know, you can't go wrong with a, with a Vaquero or a new Vaquero. Um, you got the Bearcats. This is also a Ruger product. This is a 22, what they call the new Bearcat. It's got a engraving of a bear on the cylinder, the Ruger name on the cylinder, and that's a 22 LR. And that's a nice little, uh, what they call like a trapping gun, like trappers mm -hmm. use. Like literally walk up to your trap, there's an animal in it, pow, pop them with a 22, move on with life. Um, so like as a trapping gun, that's a, a neat little setup there. And you can definitely see the difference in the way the grips are fit. I mean, on this particular one, they, there's still, you know, you can see little bits of uh, variance in how the grips are fit, but definitely nice. And these hard panels dropped on nicely. Those blended in nice. This is a very nice gun of Vaquero. I've been meaning to pick one up, I just haven't gotten around to it. I don't even own a sing single action revolver, to be honest with you. I need one. I need a cap and ball revolver, too. We'll look at a few of those in a second. Ruger makes a really good product. Um, you know, there's a lot of companies that make single action revolvers now. Freedom Arms is a notable company. You know, Freedom Arms makes some really, really high end revolvers. Very, very high end revolvers. They're expensive, but they're expensive for a reason. I think Ruger probably makes the best single action production revolver. Um, you can't go wrong with like a Chimeron. Um, I'm trying to think. Pedersoli makes a pretty uh, couple of decent ones. 
Uberti does. Um, Uberti's been making light reproduction uh, light powder cap and ball revolvers and rifles and everything for a long time. The Uberti's are Italian made. There's a lot of uh, Italian made reproduction light powder stuff on the market. Of course this is a cap and ball revolver and you know you seat the projectile. It's got its own little kind of reloading press built in and that's what actually seats it. And then you can cap off your cylinders with bore butter so you don't um, you don't want like the uh, blow by setting off the other cylinders and they'll go off in your in your hand and shave it off so you have to like cap them with bore butter I mean but that's a brass frame gun it's a pretty neat setup and for the money you really can't beat them I mean for what they are I think that one's a 36 caliber yeah an 1862 police model 36 and that would have been originally more of a uh, really more or less uh, like a pocket gun. It really wouldn't have been like a duty gun, so to speak. It, that was more of a pocket gun, a gentleman's gun. Uh, a gun that probably would have been carried in the pocket quite often, in the vest pocket even. I mean, and it's, it's a pretty light gun. What? What are you talking about? And you have, a, like this gun's called the Outlaw. Um, and it's also made by, this is a, a Cimarron. And uh, this is more of, of what would be akin to like a full-size fighting gun back in the day. I mean, and this is a 45 Colt, so it's not a uh, it's a cartridge gun. It's not a cap and ball uh, gun. But this particular one is really awesome. Got the nicely case colored uh, frame, very well finished parts, properly uh, fit grip panels, nice bluing. They're a little pricey, but definitely a, a good gun for the for the money. If that's what you're into, is that sort of thing. A larger cap and ball revolver would be this uh, this Navy model, 1851 Navy. This one's made by Traditions, and uh, Traditions is actually just a name that a lot of uh, black powder guns are marketed under. But like, if you look at Tradition guns. A lot of them are Italian made, so they're probably, if I had to guess, made by, you know, Petersoli or Uberti or one of the big firms. I mean, they produce all the guns, and if I had to guess what the traditions likely are, are probably just guns that either, I wouldn't say seconds, but they're just guns that are specifically under contract made to market under traditions. But a lot of times, I mean, they are Petersoli, Uberti, I mean, like, this one's Pieta. So probably just a subsidiary of Uberti, if I had to guess. But they're very well, you know, well-built guns, good quality. This particular one's got the engraving on the cylinder. And of course you see on the cylinder, it's got a lot of the original style markings you'd see on the uh, original gun. Brass frame with a little bit of case color. And uh, this one is a 44 caliber cap and ball. Tony, like one. Use the one upstairs, Barry. Now, the black powder guns can be purchased as sporting gear. Well, uh, black powder guns, yes. They're they're not. I guess the the way to look at it, they're not really considered guns, so to speak. I mean, yeah, they are guns, and yeah, they will kill someone. But the weird thing about black powder is that you don't have to have background checks on them. So like you could literally come in here and buy this, just show your ID, you just gotta be able to prove you're 18. And that's just like buying a pellet rifle or anything else. I mean, they, for the handguns, I'm, I'm pretty sure that most stores would wanna see that you're 21, obviously. But for long guns, like if you wanna buy like a reproduction musket or whatever, you just gotta be 18 years old and, and everything like that. But um, this particular gun is a uh, Shimmeron Thunderball. It's a 45 Colt. Again, it's got a really nice uh, case-colored receiver, uh, really nice bluing, period-correct markings like you expect to see on a gun like this. The type of stamps they use, like I guess they, they roll stamp these, and they use that you know really old-timey looking font, so it gives it kind of an original look to it. And uh, the grip profile on this one is a Bilzy style, which is kind of like a Target style you know, grip they put on them. I'm not crazy about this particular, like what they call a bird's head. 
grip, I mean, if you look at it, it looks like a bird's head. So that particular type of grip, I'm not completely crazy about, especially on a really, really stout recoiling revolver. Um, but there are people that prefer it, and that type of grip angle is available. And that's a really neat gun there, especially for the money. You can't really beat it. This is the uh, Chimeron Frontier, and one of the neat things about this particular gun is that uh, it, it's more or less meant to be essentially a, a competing arena for like the Vaquero. I mean, even though it's got a very similar grip profile, fit and finish on these is pretty decent, and it's essentially like an 1871 copy but it's set up much like the Vaquero. Or I should say the Vaquero is set up a lot like this because that gun design is very, you know, old and I don't want to say antiquated. It's still a good design, but um, Chimron is making those and they're, they're high quality guns. They cost a little bit less than the Ruger, but I would say they're, they're probably just as good as the Ruger in terms of fit and finish and quality. But I think if it came down to spending six bills or more on a uh, single action revolver, I'd go ahead and just pony up on the Ruger and be done with it. It's one of the things I understand about some of them. Is it just seems like the Chimerons and the uh, Petersolis and the Ubertis, you know, they cost just as much as a Ruger, but in my opinion, the Ruger is the way to go if you're going to buy a single action revolver. Now go with a nice Vaquero. And then in the double action realm, you know, go with something like a Smith & Wesson Model 10. You can't go wrong there, a Model 13. Um, there's plenty of good options there. I mean, that's a whole other video concept. We've been talking about double action revolvers and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we have a whole counter here for single action. And it's weird. It comes in spurts. I mean, every now and then we'll have a, uh, we'll have a, a person come through and, They'll buy, you know, one or two of them or three of them, and sometimes nobody will look in this counter for a month, and then other times they'll come in and we'll sell three in a row. You just, you can't ever tell. Depends on what's been on TV that night. Well, yeah, and, and so you're not going to, you're not going to know what's going to sell if you don't have it to sell. So we try to keep the place well stocked with a variety of, of guns. That's pretty much all the single action we got in the whole store there to include cap and ball and everything. Cool. Uh, yeah. That's it. Any questions? Other than when can you take them all home? <laughs> what do you think? Hard to walk away from. What about you? Change. Change.